Hello, and welcome to the Beautifully Human podcast. I'm Nick Sheesby. In this podcast, I speak with beautiful humans from all around the world, sharing with you their incredible stories, revealing the power in every human story to spread love and humanity to a world that is in desperate need of it, to show that we can all connect in beautiful ways, no matter where we come from or what we look like. What you will find out is that we are all beautifully human. Let's all be beautifully human. I've been lurking. Please don't think I haven't. I have been. <laughs> I appreciate it. It has been quite a journey, that's for sure. It's been a, a good one. A, all beautiful. Well, that's good. I'm glad. You know, it, glad. It, it took a, yeah. a pretty fucking crazy turn for a second, but, you know. It's, uh, Definitely. It's <laughs> It's definitely, definitely been a turn. <laughs> but after after the terrible turn it took, it got really good and positive. Good. Good. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes it takes literally almost dying to swing your life around. Eh, uh, hey, I've had lung surgery, so trust me, I understand. Oh, yeah? Have you really? Yeah. Yeah, I had lung surgery. My lung collapsed uh, 2015. You know, I've been a singer for like 13 years. Touring yeah. is just like a really ironic thing I got into by the grace of it all. Yeah. So yeah, That's I understand. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, yeah, it was really just. Yeah, fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Going through all that shit, you know, like hearing hearing that from a doctor saying, "Hey, you, you might not have tomorrow," is is pretty pretty intense yeah I, I think i think when i didn't really recognize the, the severity of my situation at the time um and i just kind of brushed it off when others were much more serious than i was and i was <laughs> i like had to be very present about that it kind of changed things especially when the doctor was like your timing was great because if you had waited a couple of more days this would have been a completely different conversation oh like sure. you know capacity so yeah so yeah. what happened? What what got you to that point? Um, I honestly think it was like a sneeze or a cough is pretty much what they were going off of, like a really hard cough or sneeze. Um, because of my height, they were saying it was bound to happen technically under the under the thought process of like your lungs are bigger than the sac that contains them. So you're always living in a constricted kind of breathing thing as you grow taller and oh, bigger. Wow. So like, you know, six, three to six, seven foot people have a different lung, lung growth thing that might be stunted by the sack around it. And it's always constricted. So a lot of tall people end up being athletes or swimming or doing smoking, even like things that kind of press this along. But honestly, I think it, I think it played into the being on the 27th floor, not moving around like I'm used to, uh, stress. Um, and I think it all just collided quite honestly. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so, shit. It was fifteen percent in the upper right lung, and uh, thankfully and randomly, I um, went back to singing probably like two and a half weeks after the procedure. Wow, what? How yeah. long are you supposed to? That seems pretty quick. Yeah, no, I had a show and I wouldn't wait. Plus, <laughs> I was also going to a game, you know, show at like nine thirty club on a tour run that I was like very much a fucking fan of. Yeah, and I was I wasn't missing out either, so I was like, we're gonna get this chest tube out of me before this show. Yeah, let's get and this then, shit done. Yeah, I'm gonna go sing. Um, probably not. I mean, I'm probably in the bigger picture of the time in the hospital and then home. I mean, I feel like it was a collective of a month that I gave it. <laughs> right. But I didn't. Um. They didn't really give me any issue to say not to, so I didn't, you know, you hurt myself. I didn't. And you're fine now. So it worked out. I mean, is is it functioning well now? Yeah, I mean, we're we're five years later, and you know, I'm very cognizant of certain things. There's things that I greatly want to change. I kind of got back to smoking cigarettes at one point due to stress because of it being a triggering thing, and. Sure. That effort has been difficult. It's changed in so many ways, um, but that relationship has been difficult while touring, especially because I don't drink like that. Not that you need advice on tour, right? Um, but everybody has their something, right? Totally. And either way, you know, either way, I hit a bowl, smoke a cigarette, it's all the same in that regard. Yeah. Um, so uh, 
th that transition of certain stuff had to wean very different. Some stuff stayed the same, and some stuff was, you know became really different. But um, no real, no real follow up. Never had it happen again. Um, you know, so it's been it's been good. It's been, I, I have I still can't scuba dive, which is something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so in trade, I think I'm gonna try to jump out of a plane. Hey. <laughs> I think that's gonna be the altitude. Thing I'm gonna figure out instead. Um, yeah, yeah. While touring, you know, while touring, I've learned things. Salt Lake City is not my friend at all. Sure. Oh man, I bet not. Uh, but I'm fine in Denver, so therefore I think it's the altitude and the salt. Ah, weird. I was gonna say, yeah. I was about to say so Denver probably not either, but that's that's strange that it's okay yeah, in Denver. It, it never really goes down in Denver. It normally happens in Salt Lake. So you know, over the years, and even you know, when I had the surgery in 2015, I had the surgery in that spring, and then started Janet that fall, and then for the first time flew in general, and then flew to Japan. Oh shit! So it was a different sense of figuring things out while flying at certain times because you know it was really. You know, that was the thing I was more worried about than singing like a month out. <laughs> yeah, totally. It was that. Well, especially um, on that long so, of a flight. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it really wasn't terrible, wasn't that bad. But I, I think I'm, I think I'm on guard about certain things, even still, like just certain stuff, and especially with COVID. Um, oh man, yeah. In some, yeah, you know, in some air of these conversations, I'm aligned into the I'm compromised by you, by you people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Category. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been it's been great. I've 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 inhaled some really really beautiful fresh air around this world now. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad for it. Yeah, I you've really given your lungs. Words. I don't waste a lot of the air. <laughs> right, you've given your lungs a good variety of of air from all over. <laughs> yeah. Ah oh, shit! Yeah, I didn't even I, I wasn't even thinking of that. But I you know like with my liver, I have to be pretty pretty uh, on top of not oh, I, I, getting I, I anything. Have, I have some some liver complications. I have liver scarring, acute. Oh wow! Yeah. So you. Whether that's whether that's recorded or not, I haven't really said much about it. I don't really choose to a lot. Right. Um, but yeah, that kind of came in the swing about three years ago, and as of the top of this year, uh, enzyme counts look good. Counts went down. It seems like that my body is kind of finally fighting it off after three years. Awesome. Um, so that's kind of yeah. <laughs> So I've been a lot more aware, definitely trying to eat different. Yeah, for sure. What have you been e what have you huh? been eating differently? Um I I need to I looked at my blood type diet in general. So okay. this is before anything. And so I really have an I have an affinity for salt and I know that. But I'm not strung out on it where it's a problem yet. I just know to be preemptive. Um sure. but I'm but I I really do like meat. But more than that, I like chicken more than I like steak. And it's like, I have a decent relationship with beef. I just don't <laughs> think I should be eating poultry as much as I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've pretty much eaten sushi till, since I was like five. So I have a very odd relationship with cooked fish. But I'll eat sushi as much as I'm allowed. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, I've tried to really change my relationship with rice and carbs and things because I love them so much. Oh, man, me um, too. And purposely try to make more bases vegetables or really actually incorporate vegetables and stuff. I got into gardening yeah, in this pandemic, cool. at my, you know, well, at my mother's um, and had an actual time to be able to, like, desire a chicken wrap, cut some kale right. and feel good about it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. That kind of, so um, I've just tried to incorporate more stuff and make juices more of a thing and vitamins because I've learned from touring that hydration is the thing that I lack in general. Oh, man, And, yeah. you know, it's even worse on tour. And becoming a hospitality coordinator um, over the past three some odd years, three or four years, I completely changed my relationship about that with others. So I've become a water snoot. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like, pretty much happened. And um, I try I, I, I try to try more things now. Um, uh, so I've been trying to incorporate you know, just vegan stuff, you know, just trying other impossible meats, trying other things, like eating the stuff I like and just taking meat out of it. Yeah. It, it is no different in a lot of ways. And, uh, definitely you not. Know, yeah. Off, I should say. Yeah. I, I did, um, I slowly worked my way to it, but, um, I started off like, my doctors told me just your body's going to tell you what you can and can't eat. It's going to tell you when it doesn't want something. And I ate, I ate a burger like 
pretty soon after I was sick and my body just horribly rejected it. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll stop that. And then it started yeah. not liking chicken and turkey very well. So I started doing the pescatarian thing and then slowly worked away from that. And I actually, in February, started eating vegan and my body has worked just responded incredibly well like whenever i do a little workout routine i feel my body just spring back better and it's just it's been functioning so much better now that i've gone full plant-based good good yeah. that's awesome that's awesome yeah someone someone very dear to me um has gone plant-based uh within the past year or so and in the incorporation of my interest in like trying to cook things more vegan just to support it or to try other stuff and figure out, you know, other places and spaces. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been definitely interesting for sure. Yeah. So. I actually, like you said, you started gardening during this pandemic. I started cooking because on the ah. road, I don't have to cook. You know, when yeah, I was off yeah. the road, it was so quick that I never took the time to learn. So this quarantine, I was like, well, fuck it. I'm going to start learning how to cook something rather than you know i mean restaurants were shut down but yeah. you know it was nice to be able to say i'd like to eat this tonight and go ahead and make it yeah i mean i've always liked cooking i've always been able to cook pretty decent i think my mom and my um aunts are pretty i guess like by hobby have learned to become trained my mother specifically um, has has basically become French trained, like fr classically French trained wow. over the past six or seven years out of her own interest. So I've always like, you know, even as a child, I always grew up in a house that was like Bon Appetit magazines and cool. cookbooks and like that kind of thing. But my mom is a definite foodie who travels for it. So yeah. she's done, she's done like, I think she's done El, El Bulli before it closed and like she'll go to France for a month and take classes with like bread and beef and then go back for soup and chicken and, you know, so she sous vide everything. So it's been nice to be home because I'm never here and I haven't been in close proximity to her in right. a long time because she travels. She travels like we do. Sure. And um, so to kind of pick up on tricks of the trade and be able to cook stuff, be able to garden yeah. and then pick everything. She has every herb in general. So it's all very fresh. She's a bit of a purist and kind of a gastro cook. So she's very way things metrically sure. and you know it's like you know just she's just very detailed in that way so it's a it's for me it's soothing because there's a there's a space to really do it all if you ever have interest there's this very cool institute i found called future food or it's future food institute or food future institute and this uh like i think michelin starts starred chef basically made a couple of vegan restaurants and from it he's made his own institute it's like a certification thing over a year of basically like how to generally cook classically trained but then also to make classically trained recipes vegan plant-based no sustainable shit. however oh that's amazing i will have yeah. yeah that sounds incredible I'll definitely check that out yeah it seems really cool it's you know the relationship that people get while touring you know mm -hmm. like i've known you for years now probably what years. like <laughs> seven eight years something like that yeah yeah definitely and it's it's really cool and it's something that i don't think a lot of people truly understand uh of friendship that can be so quick and we haven't even actually toured together we've we've just worked when we're in the same proximity as each other which is super yeah. rad and we became fast yeah. friends and then we see each other every couple years and it's like it's super rad when we get to see each other, you know, and it's, it's yeah, a cool it's way to have a friendship. It's very in passing. And, um, I feel like the real times we ever worked is me working for you. Yeah. A lot of the time. And then I, I think a lot of the time in that, in, in, in that, in that time frame. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, uh, it's, it should say, it, it probably comes off to people like touring is a bunch of misfits with a bunch of escapism issues who, Which, you know, either is, is a clean slate and, and represent themselves specifically or, you know, become who they want to be, however you want to look at that, right? Right. But the but the reality is is when you when you get in this situation, I think I love that it's not as competitive as people think or walk into it thinking it is. Right. Because quite frankly, if I'm there and you're there, we're there for separate reasons, but with some definition of our work ethic being something mutual, right? Right. 
Absolutely. And and the, the 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 stipulation is the same for everybody, and I think it makes it very even across all boards that yeah. you are contractually being taken away from your life uh, as you would deal with it to come and work for us doing this for someone else's lifestyle. Um, yeah, and totally. I think, and I think because a lot of other professions, it isn't based on lifestyles. Yeah, definitely. the conflict or the interests or, right. or the intention. Let me say, um, it, it, it might get muddled, but I think it's easy to make. I feel like it's obviously easier to make friends in your own department. It's obviously easy to make friends with whoever lives on your bus. But oh, the real probably, friends that sure. you make are are like the random ones on a day off that you see in the same place that you're at. Exactly. Yeah, that's those the, are, that's the good stuff. You totally, know? that's the that's that real shit. That's that's yeah, really man. nice. <laughs> you know, it's like oh <laughs> it shit, is, Ashley's Ashley's really nice. in Cleveland tonight. I'm near Cleveland. I'm gonna go say what's yeah. up. Yeah, and I think after a while, just like you kind of have a catalog of points of contact for work, you have this opportunity to really see every friend that's moved. I feel like for a long time, I've always said to my friends that I that I love. You know, believe me when I say I am the actual friend that can get to you anywhere you actually are. Yeah. Like in, in, in actuality. And if I if I can't guarantee it this month, I'll bet I'll see you in three. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know what I mean? And so for, for friendships within tours, I think that there's a different grace that everyone gives each other um, a little bit because I don't really know much of you. And I don't think a lot of people care to know you also much beyond this. Right. But then there's the friends you make that are the people that you catch up with or the people that you think of. Um, even the active relationships of liking a Facebook post of someone that you toured with. Yeah, totally. That stuff is still an active engagement, you know, in, in general. It's not like we pat each other on the back very often on like, good job loading in and making it work today. We don't do that <laughs> right. with each other. We don't have the time. Right. Yeah, um, exactly. And I think for that aspect, we're, we're very uh, individual and isolated oh, man. while being around people. And I think I've, sure. I've said that before, you know, like, even though I'm on a bus full of people, I am really alone. Or if I want to be alone, I'm only, I only got my bunk. Right. Yeah, there's um, no privacy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I think after a while, it, it works itself out. Because I do think that people get tired of their bus mates sometimes. Oh, and you are yeah. looking for other buses and other people that you say hey to a catering or you catch up with on a cigarette break or however you do it, you know? Totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I, I like that you said you started gardening because, you know, like I know everyone in the world has had a very tough time with 2020, you know, and we're not the only we're not the only people affected by it. But our industry got totally fucked and decimated and you know i it it drives me nuts when i hear these people that won't wear masks and then they say i just want to go to a concert and then i'm thinking well put a fucking mask on and we can do this you know like we can start to move forward to it like there's thousands of people who want to put on a concert for you that are sitting at home you know doing different different stuff with their life now you know so um yeah. so what else besides besides gardening what else did you what, what did your pivot in 2020 look like because we all had to um, look at life and uh, go well what what now what do we got going on um the pivot the pivot went kind of in the same direction but then had tendrils to it and i shifted my mind into being I, 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 okay so i've learned about myself that i'm pretty sensitive i'm not incredibly emotional but if i am sensitive it's either out of a space of frustration or out of a space of mis mis uh misinterpretation right yep and i refuse so i'm like very realistically negative and i don't think that that's a bad trait because i think sometimes as women it's very easy to lie to ourselves because our fears of rejection manifest a certain way and i just don't want to live like that um and so to know you did nothing wrong um, and to know you have no control over it and neither do your superiors is one thing. But I made sure to tell myself and to figure out how I was not going to lie to myself thinking in April that we'll be back in July. I was not going to feed myself that world. Today. Right. <clears throat> um, I also 
took the inserted effort to re- reposition the podcast that I've had into a YouTube channel oh, and, then do, and then do Zoom interviews. And so the first month and a half, maybe two months, I had tons of Zoom interviews that are out and some I still have to put out yeah. um, with people that, that are touring professionals. And I mean tons of vets that I am so deeply appreciative I even had an opportunity to meet them once, let alone get them to say yes. Totally. And to have a very chance parent conversation in a world where we really didn't know any of what was going to go on. And and I didn't realize how cathartic it might have been at the time until people really started opening up about certain stuff. I had a really dear friend of mine say, you know, I'm enjoying these these discussions. This is the only time I see other faces because he's single and he lives alone. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, there was the other friend that was like, you know, I could read all the manuals I want, learn all the software I like, but what I do is tactile and I have no light to touch. Mm. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. You know, but, um, so, so th- that stuff came to the surface kind of early for me. And then in the interviews and just conversations with people, it was a lot of talk, even some people asking me stuff. Cause obviously one of the first things when, when most people knew me was VIP. So it plays into right. What does that mean for a meet and greet, bro? Like, ah, oh God, doesn't yeah. look like it's happening. You no, know, can't imagine. Uh, what, is, what are we gonna do? Or even as a hospitality coordinator, you know, the, the, the relationship I have to rethink out with myself about how do we sanitize handles, buttons, doorknobs, oh my showers. God. What does catering mean? What does catering look like? How are we laying out these dressing rooms? Um, just all of that stuff. I over, I over absorbed myself with to a point that I had to stop thinking about it because we have no answers. Right. Yeah, there is um there is you know, no answers really, yet. <laughs> there is no answers still. Still. So um the brainstorming aspect of stuff was 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 I think important for me. It felt really good. I really needed it. Um but in even with all of my productivity, I just had a wall and sure. I just got very unmotivated and I just let it win. And I've desired to let it through and let it win because I just was not going to sit here and try to distract myself from going through something like no I have to let this win however that means and come out of it yeah um and I I I do that I subscribe to it and I think it's uh an important way to sometimes you know understand some things because this this shit's a lot and one of my very good friends said something that I, I try to always repeat now. And he says, you know, I think what, what hits the hardest is that we're all technically in another life, our positions and what we do and how we do our job. We could technically be disaster relief services. Oh, for sure. We can build you a structure in any climate, any weather with power and lights and let yeah. it run, you know, and make that um, shit look good and make it look amazing. And yeah. so to be almost in a space of, of an air of invincibility with or without ego attached to that. Sure. Um and then to have that taken by something bigger than that construct is just crazy. You it we it, this really was not expected. I was in Seattle literally the day before and my my famous last words were, you know, we're we're in entertainment. Uh, we'll be fine, yeah. you know, people yeah. people need to get away from their existence. So concerts, sports, yeah. We're all going to be fine. Exactly. We're good. We're fucking we're golden. Fucking good. You know how good we are? We make you all so much money, so much money. You're going to guarantee that we're fine. Absolutely. I can, I can, I can guarantee you that. Yeah. And now we're here. Yeah, so I was like, know. well, That's you know, all good. these country, or all these, all these companies are based on making money and greed and all of that, and I banked on that. I was like, oh yeah, totally fine, all good. And then literally the next morning, I woke up and I read the news, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> oh man you know and there were there were like trickles of like i had one tour where the artists were in their late 70s and there were stadium yeah. shows and it was like there's no way in hell that's happening like groups, groups of people are bad to do you know bad to have right now and older you know the older generation of folks are the most susceptible so we got all of that yeah <laughs> there's no way it's yeah. happening and yeah, it was just like, it was, and I like the way you said it of like, we provide all of this from the ground up, you know, we build this every single day. And then all of a sudden it was like, nope, we got, we got nothing, you know, literally yeah. nothing, you and, know? And, and I have learned, and if I did, and I have to always make sure to, to say, you know, I've had a family member that toured for 15, 17 some odd years. 
and you know with a legacy act quite frankly and right. when she stopped touring which at this point i i maybe want to say it's might have been maybe three or four years and she's not entirely how i got into touring but i've always had a vis- visual representation of me in this world right right and when she left i just was like are you crazy but i didn't <laughs> think about it at the time of just her wanting something more consistent and wanting something more deeply stable for sure. period yeah not because of it being her situation was stable touring wise just on her on her you know just who she worked for etc but i didn't realize how important it might have been until it really came down to I want a dog. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah, it's something and that I want simple. a regular schedule, <laughs> and I want to take tennis lessons, and I want to like cook my own dinner and yeah. pass out on my own couch. Yeah. And one of the things that she said to me at the top of this that 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 deeply stuck with me, and it's in the interview that I did with I did you know one of the panels with her involved. She was saying if she could say it to people more often she would say you are more than your job and yeah. you are worth more than your job absolutely and it it you forget it you might realize it but you really do forget it because i really think that our profession is really attached to our worth oh 100 percent. and i think it's spun a lot of us a lot of different ways out oh, of anxiety man. out of yeah just, just out of insecurity out of overconfidence however you want to look at it Oh, absolutely. You know, because going back to what you had said, too, is, you know, like misfits that, you know, have have a complex, you know, and it's it's like, yeah, we can easily just forget about things because we go on the road and then that's our reality. You know, real life at home goes away, you know, yeah. so like when you are used to be gone, being gone 10 to 11 months a year from, you know, quote unquote, real world or reality, it's like, oh, shit. Now I'm home. Now I have to deal with all yeah, this man. coming at me. And there's no, you know, there's no hope for shows or future right now in touring. It's like, you know, it's, it's a really tough reality to look at, especially when yeah. so, so many people are so tied to that. You know, it's like I tour with this group and that's who I am, you know, and it's yep. it's yep. It's tough. I mean, you know, mental health on tour is a, is a really big issue and just norm, mm-hmm. in normal times, let alone when it's all stripped away and then you have to deal with you know, life, life without something you've had for, you know, for me, it's 14, 15 years, you know? Yeah. And, I, I, mean, mean, I mean, I'm pretty much the same. And when you're, in, when you include singing in it, I mean, we're talking a, we're talking a good 20 year situation of investment yeah. towards just toward the field. Um, and, and I, and I, and I am glad that there's things that have been preemptive and I'm glad that there's things that have happened. I, I will say, because now more so I can a bit. Um, one of the things that did come out of this pandemic that I, that I did in the pivot was I ended up and I still am um, taking certifications on intellectual property because I went to full sale for music ah. business, um, touring has always been great, but I always wanted to make sure I could figure something out. Sure. Um, so ever, so since I was real little, this is super nerdy, but I always thought ethnomusicology was like a really dope thing. <laughs> yeah. And but the problem is, is that there's not enough native folk, native new um, sounds and music that haven't already been recorded or uh, documented. And so, or archived, let's say it that way. So, uh, I also look at intellectual property, copyright law, um, music sync stuff, which really is under the window of music supervision. And so I've always had a pretty good taste for these things, and I've always liked it. And so that's kind of the pivot I took was to figure out music supervision stuff in a, in a direct sense as of now, trying to figure that out. And um, been studying for the LSAT uh, because whether I, I, whether I get into law school or not, it makes me no difference. But if I get a decent score, no matter what, it's better than the GRE. Yeah, and that's so, for sure. Just moving ahead, because I've always thought about it. I'm a bit of a visualization person. And so right around my lung surgery was the time we really had to have the conversation with, with myself about what am I going to do if I if I can't sing? Right. What are we going to do if I don't sell these songs? And how are we going to make this make sense? Because I still wasn't touring on a bus yet. Right. Just yet, you know? Yeah. So, and I mean, that's it, um, in a singing career, that's a massive reality to have to look at. You know, like, yeah, yeah, my, the, <laughs> lungs are pretty yeah. important to that. 
Yeah, and more so than that, I'll never forget, I had to sign this, like, contract or little, you know, waiver thing that basically was saying that if they had messed up my vocal cords at any point because the tube in oh, your yeah. throat for lung surgery is bigger than, like, any other surgical kind of tube, apparently. Oof. If they messed up my vocal cords, they weren't liable. Holy shit. And so that's more of what I was concerned about yeah. than really being worried about breathing, quite frankly, sure. which is a very odd space to be into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is an odd space, I'm sure. Yeah, getting that into your brain of like, I'm not necessarily worried about breathing. Like, don't fuck up my, don't, don't do that to my, to my vocal cords. Yeah, so, you know, I went under in a different type of nervousness um, and obviously came out very comforted by a lot. But then obviously I just had to kind of come back to a drawing board because I still wasn't on the road yet in that regard. I was still had tons of local work on the books to come and everything else in between, but I still really needed to figure out what was going to make sense. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I stuck to it and did some more local work, did Made in America that year, which was wonderful because there were some artists I had seen over the years at Made in America specifically while working who then saw me and somehow people had found out and that was something i didn't realize in the bigger picture it, uh, of the week of being in that was that so many people around the world either text emailed facebooked whatever channel they could to find out about my surgery where i stood with it how i was i mean it was it was freakishly overwhelming like it was freakishly overwhelming like vip employees somehow caught wind you know what oh I mean? yeah yeah um and uh that's pretty really beautiful uplifting. though yeah i would say there are there are some of those moments where people text and call you know with mine i was i was pretty private about mine for a little while because you know it was not necessarily embarrassed but it was like man i almost just fucking died because i was an idiot and drank myself to death you know and it's not that not that good of a look really and so when people were reaching out i was kind of like how did you find out i was just kind of keeping this close knit, you know, for a little while. And, yeah, yeah. But, you know, at the same point, it was like, oh, it's really nice to to feel that, you know, someone yeah. gives a shit about how you're doing. It was it was it was it was wonderful. I really appreciated it at the time. I I have my very fond memory about it all, you know, and I'm always very thankful every year on the anniversary. And I always try to speak something about it just because, you know, one of the things that deeply came out of it was not only being a singer and metaphorically figuring out what your breathing looks like, but the literal sense of, of not wasting your words. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I kind of got to that point of just not wasting my fucking air. Yeah. With certain stuff, to be frank. Or, yeah. um, and in some spaces, I still have I still have my troubles with that because I am a very good communicator, but that doesn't yeah. mean that I'm confrontational. Right. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I, I try to be careful with myself. Like, I'm good, realistically, but I try to be careful with myself because I'm not just going to run around like this. I'm just not going to run around this venue like this and not stop or take a break or, you know. So I try to be a little more cognizant of, of, of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? I, 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 and I mean, and I think, I think if we're going to be really honest, I needed it. Like I needed the realization. Yeah. Um, not because I was running around fucking reckless, not also much because of that, but I, I do, I do feel that it was the check that I needed. And I, and I'm, and I'm glad that it was that because if it was any other limb or any other appendage or anything, it might, might not have stuck as hard sure. into being like, thank you, you know, changing the way I approach things and changing my just, way of life um and because i grew up meditating and had been practicing buddhism for by the time i mean shoot by the time that happened i at least had been actively practicing for about five or six years yeah. so actually to have something be taken away that is incorporated in where your spirituality or you're you're looking for something to lie yeah. is also a wake-up call quite frankly. <laughs> yeah 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 I think that touches a lot of different aspects of life <laughs> yeah so you know, I, I just, I just try and live differently. I feel like in a lot of spaces, I've always tried to, to, to take the cautionary tales. I found, I, I have found in this pandemic though, you know, I've been doing what I can to be a very good listening board for friends and other tour people and whatsoever, you know, just who are having a rough time, you know, yeah. some people really don't have a lot of personal friendships outside of tour people. Some people really just don't don't have all of that aligned all the time or don't have access at three o'clock in the morning with a different time zone right. and someone be up you know what i mean totally. i'm up so 
I think that type of uh, support and necessariness. Oh, well, I talked to you. There's a huge rainbow on the sky. Um, you know, I think that stuff is is important. And um, to be an active friend and to try to be an active service in a way I can, try to network friends with other people. One of the things totally. that I've been very emphatic about is not, and I'll be transparent, you know, my worry about touring people of color, not, not holding on. Sure. I worry. I worry badly. And I worry a little bit sometimes for women as well. Yeah, you know? oh, man, for sure. I, and, to be, and we haven't talked, so you don't know I got a tour manager position last year. I No, I did not know that. That's amazing. Yes. Thank you. So I, I did that between, like, I left my, my hospitality gig, you know, towards the end, started that, did a domestic international run with a newer artist, but it was sold out, you know. Amazing. Like, so it was a very good run. Yeah. And so to come home before I even left, it was the relationship of my stuff's in a storage unit, which I had never had done before. Mm -hmm. And that was very jarring. Yeah. And then figuring out what we're really going to do after this tour is over. So this on top of it was like a, just a nothing I saw coming right. and trying to save up, get a place, maybe travel, you know, you know, figure it out. So, yeah, yeah, it's all been, it's all, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I wish I could sit here and be sadder about a lot, but, but I, I know some people dear who have lost, you know, people close to them oh, this and some other things. And so I try to not right. whine. <laughs> right. There's you know? far worse shit happening to Hell yeah. so many and people I, and, I, and i will admit because I, I i choose to treat my friend as a caution not a cautionary tale but as an example of something that's occurred a dear friend of mine husband to one of my best friends who i've who, and i've known him for a very long time as well um died of the flu last year at like 33 oh my you god know, father father of three under six shit. um and it was sudden. I mean, it was sudden. And it was just very out the fucking blue. Yeah. And it was the last, it was the week of my finals before graduating. I ironically had a break between between two tours and was home. Yeah. Um. So it all felt very kismet in the aspect of being home, being here, being here to help her, being here to be a part, being here to, to say goodbye, to, to, to actively do that. So this, this pandemic gave me a different sense of seriousness because I saw it last year. Right. And you can't tell me shit. I saw it last year. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of how I've been. So I've, you know, my family has been very proactive about being spacious and not really engaging. We, we, we're not playing any of those games. My friends at home with their families have been very sincere about it too. Like we're yeah. not having, I mean, everyone pretty much has lightened up around the real last month yeah other yeah. than that you know we've all really been very isolated right um and that can be very reverting totally so. and i mean you know your story about your your best friend that just goes to show it's I mean, life is so fucking short you just literally it's have so short, no man. idea and you know i think that that me knowing because i had such a close call with death you know it's like these people that aren't taking things seriously and I'm like, man, just, I don't understand why you want to play with it. It's not worth it. You know, you get yeah. this, we get this one shot that we know about and why, why risk it? It's not worth risking. Yeah. I, I, I think if I didn't have such a, in general, I think I've had such a really, really beautiful concept of what life can be and, 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 and how you can do it and how you can sculpt it that I just don't like, choice being taken without it being from you you yeah. know like i just don't like that something you can't see something you didn't do something <laughs> simple you might have been a part of just can ruin it all oh yeah and we you know and i and i and i think touring specifically made me look at so much shit different just like stuff that doesn't look like it's reckless that's just reckless to me now like share a bag of chips oh my god what you know <laughs> what yeah. the fuck we're not what yeah you know or like you know just like the towel bin or the oh, showers yikes. and, and yeah. just our relationships to <laughs> restaurants and oh. and our beddings and just like it, it's a bunch of stuff I'm not peeved out about, so I don't want to see I'm freaking out because I'm not. Right. It's just more of just the little shit you didn't think about. Exactly. People sharing joints, people yeah. taking shots. Like yeah, right. That's what I was just about to say. Passing joints around, taking shots, just sharing drinks. Uh, any of it is just any any of it. <laughs> and, and to be honest, uh, one of my dear homegirls, she's a public speaker for this. She's a motivational speaker. 
um, based under getting um, meningitis as a student athlete in college and becoming a, a amputee. And her relation, like I, I have watched a friend, you know, figure out what country she can travel to mm. and how she might have gained this illness from a water fountain or from sharing glasses at a party at college. Oh, my God. Like, and so for that, you know, I should have been more on my P's and Q's in life from having someone around telling me to be on my P's and Q's, you know? Totally. But it really, people really, I, th- I think none of us really focus on things until it happens to us. And it shouldn't have, it shouldn't, right. no one should be the martyr for us to learn, but it shouldn't take it kicking us in the face to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been very eye-opening to, yeah, just those little details that, Right. You just don't think about it. It's like, oh, let's just pass a bag of chips around and all stick our fingers in our mouth and then hand it around. It's, <laughs> holy shit, man. Yeah. It's yeah, funny. Man. Even and, and, even now I watch a movie and I see people hugging or just, you it, know, it's crazy it's, to it's, see. It's weird to see anymore. And I, I don't like that. And, I, I don't you know, like it. <laughs> it's not that I'm living in fear, but I, I live with a, a respect for human life that you know, I don't want to give it to you. I don't know what I'm carrying or what you have, you know, like people could look at me and think, Oh, this guy's very healthy, but I have a really fucked up liver. And, you know, like, I don't know what would happen if I got it. So I looking at someone else, you can have a million different, you know, things affecting you and your body. And I don't want to be the cause to any, any negative shit to your life. So I just live out of a very respectful place to people and I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to risk my life or their life, their life more, you know, more yeah. than mine. I, 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 yeah, I, I try to be very present about that. And, and, and I think maybe the effort of being present is knowing that some people might be very negligent and, um, you know, I can only do as best as I can, you know, for me and, uh, just try to output, you know, something comfortable and something safe and something fun and something kind, you know? Absolutely. Since we, we travel quite a lot. Um, what is, what is one of your favorite travel moments or a few? I mean, whatever. I know there's, it's, it's a very Um, broad question to people who travel a shit ton. That's fine. (laughs) I mean, the, the, the fortunate is, is that my mom, I, like I said, I had an aunt that traveled by touring. And I have another aunt that traveled by interest internationally. And my mother um, has always worked on clinical trials for, like, pharmaceuticals and things like that. And so she's always internationally traveled as well, personal interest in, in, in work-wise. So for me, I've always had a really good, like, uh, I've always had a good leg up on places to go, things to see because of them. Because yeah. most of them have been there before me, especially my aunt. Um, and it was even better because then I could go to a venue and she'd go, oh, you know, find so-and-so and say hi. Right. Um, but I think I, I try to break it up kind of in ages because when I was younger, I had a real fortune of being able to go to L.A. a lot because mm-hmm. my aunt lived there and was working at a recording studio for, for, for a while. And I love New York and I always have loved New York. I always figured I'd live in L.A. and New York. That was just kind of where my head was with it. Yeah. Um, but I knew, and I always like to say that I like the city of New York, but I like the person I am in L.A. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I can, I can so, understand that. Okay. And so for that, um, and because I've never lived there, at, it, it, it's, I've never had to, quite frankly. Um, for me, the places I've found where I've had such a great time or it's been such a – I like – I like had a, like fucking – I had a real experience in Eugene, Oregon. All like right. Eugene, like we had a random one-off day on Slipknot, mm-hmm. and we stopped in Eugene. And at that point, I still hadn't been to Portland yet. And I think I might have been to Seattle, but never left the venue. Right. And I got out, and I think it might have been Pride Week, and it was like really nice weather. And I had just never seen anything like it. It kind of reminded me of Maryland because it was so many trees and the air was really clean. And it yeah. was like, it was a lot for me. And I, um, I just enjoyed it. It was the, really the first time. And that's what not tour would have been 2016. So this would have been after years of local tours between Boston and Virginia, and then really doing a tour even with international because of Janet in right. 2015. Yeah. This was the first time I really was like, I could move here. Right. Right. 
That's a cool feeling. I, right? And I had never felt it before like that. Yeah. Like enough where I like downloaded Zillow to learn. And then <laughs> a, a, a year or so later, I ended up in fucking Portland. Yeah. I loved it even more. Oh, man. It's one of my favorite places. Um, I think that was a that was a great one. When I finally got to do Canada um, mm -hmm. on Kanye, we really got to do it. So it was it was like Toronto, Montreal, uh, uh, Quebec. No, 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 Slipknot was Quebec. Uh, Edmonton, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really got to see it all and fell in love with Vancouver. Oh man, Vancouver is amazing. Oh, uh, such a beautiful go, place. Uh, I just it's like a, one of the places I'm like, oh, I want to go back. Yeah. Um, and and I think in the in this in the states it was it was spaces I didn't expect to be like oh okay like I strangely like Detroit it kind of yeah. reminded me of Baltimore and Pittsburgh totally um, oh big time I I really liked Iowa yeah like yeah. I Des Moines, like West Des Moines cool wasn't place. wasn't terrible right. um, Fargo was pretty cool yeah. don't like Kansas much you know yeah like, yeah yeah <laughs> I figured out I figured out certain things um, yeah and I. That any tour I've been on, I haven't had the, the, the fortune of, of the tour taking me to Europe. Mm, and so for yeah. that, I'm incredibly happy that I got to go to London, the top of, of last year, yeah. and really get to see it. I grew up in a BBC, PBS house, like very much British mystery shit my whole life. I'm a huge Doctor Who kid. So <laughs> Love that. for me, it was like a deep bucket list to go. I didn't do much, but I did everything and I loved it. Um, yeah. and getting to New Zealand oh, last man, year. I still have didn't not Didn't expect it. Did, didn't expect it. Couldn't believe it. And did New Zealand and Australia. Um, Amazing. And uh, it was, my family's been plenty and, and, and for some time they've gone. But I was so excited for New Zealand. I, could, I was like, let's go to Australia. But I was really excited for New Zealand. And yeah. um and I don't think I've, I mean, it was, I mean, it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. And I just, I just, I just loved it there. Like I was just, I was sad to leave New Zealand to go to Australia. You I know? bet. <laughs> like, and that's funny um, when you're like, oh shit, I'm going to Australia. And that's fucking rad. But I'm right. super bummed because I have to leave New Zealand. <laughs> right. And it fucking sucks, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, um, and uh, I just, I just, Japan was the real I'm going to another country that happened on Janet and, okay. and I soaked it up everything I could between Osaka and Tokyo. I, I mean, everything that I could get my hands on just yeah. to like learn, taste, went to a Buddhist temple. I mean, awesome. I really took advantage of being there because be, because my mind has always been, always been, I don't know if I'm coming back here. Oh, absolutely. And I think touring gives you that kind of paranoia. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Um, and I think because I haven't done Europe, I really long for it. I've always wanted to go to Italy and, and, and that yeah. kind of thing. But nothing, nothing replaced going to New Zealand and Australia. Oh, nothing. that's so cool. I, yeah. I, yeah. I can close my eyes and smell it. Oh, I love that. And I love yeah. how you said that of like that paranoia of I don't know if I'll be back, but I might be back 400 times. But just in case, right. I'm going to live it up while I'm here. But just in case I'm not here five more times this year, like I should be, right. um, you know, and, and for that, it's also made it easier and fun for my friends to travel because it, it, because now I'm kind of, I kind of can incorporate like, oh, you know, real small hole in the wall bookstores and donut totally. shops and vintage stores and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I want to stay also in New Zealand. Like all the international stuff is just really fucking sick. Yeah. Um, Hawaii, Hawaii was done so well. It was I was there for two weeks. Cool. It was it was taken care of completely. I just went in a car and drove in circles. It was beautiful. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> um. All right. So, on that one, with all the places you have been, if I were to give you a plane ticket to anywhere in the world, where would you go? Oh man, if I could go anywhere, I want to go to Italy. I want to go. I've always wanted to go to Italy, like passionately. Yeah, <laughs> would would love to spend time there. Otherwise, um, it's either there or, or or Bali has or Fiji. I'm sorry, has really been on my mind. <laughs> yeah, I would love to go to Fiji as well, or Bali, both both it and Italy. I've not been to either of those three, so I'll go with you to any of those. 
Yes, please. <laughs> I just I, it, and, and it's not so much about eating as much as it is about seeing a lot of old architecture and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I definitely, I definitely say Italy, and I dream of Tanzania. I dream Ooh. of it. Yeah, Tanzania would be amazing. Yeah, I, I like. I think of it a lot. I don't know why. I sometimes try to pay attention to things like that. Like, what is the poll that has you interested? And I still can't figure it out. I just would love to go. Yeah, and you there. know, those are one of those those are those fun fun ones where you're like, yeah, I don't know why I want to go here so badly, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> you know, because I definitely gotta try. Not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have I have an app that tracks all my travel, and like I've backlogged all my travel and oh, that's awesome. I'll, I'll send it over to you what it's called polar Thank steps you. and you can backtrack your or backlog all your tours and it tells you like mileage and countries you've been to and percentage of the world and it's it's just so awesome i'm such oh, a so cool. oh my god i'm such a nerd about it and um anyway with everywhere i've been which I, i'm severely fortunate for all the places i've been able to see in this world and you know i put it all in and then i look at percentage of the world and i'm at like 18 percent wow and i was like you have so much to go (laughs) god damn i thought i'd been a lot of places and i have i haven't even i've seen a blip of what's left of the world i um i had a uh i had a someone gift me one of those scratch off maps i really wanted one oh yeah and it's funny it's funny to scratch off like I should have asked for like the United States one. It would have looked like I had a dent in it. Because yeah. when I did the, did the the one over the world, I was like, "Oh, this is terrible." Yeah, oh, it, it is. It's sad. When I looked at that number, I went, "Oh God, I haven't seen anything." Time to get traveling. Got to go. Exactly. Got to exactly. do it. I know. I know. For a long time, and I and I have a bucket list I wrote when I was like a kid, and it always anything I've ever had, it always has Machu Picchu on it. Mm, yeah. Um. But, I, but then I think after my surgery, I just started thinking, like, how could you bless could I figure it out? But that would be something I would like to strive to be able to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, Machu Picchu know. would be incredible. In a, in a real way. Yeah, I almost went last year, and then something came up, and I just didn't end up going. But I had booked oh, – I had even booked a – I had booked a flight down to Peru and was going to go by myself because I was like, fuck it, I'm going. I want to see it. And I don't know how long it's going to be around. So, you know, but yeah, as I would, I would definitely go by myself. I like, I, I would love to go with someone, but I am fine with going by myself. Yeah. I mean, traveling with people is rad, but also traveling by yourself is just a real beautiful way to figure out what you are capable of and like what, you know, just learning other cultures by yourself is is a really neat way to do to do yeah. traveling. I was very excited. I went um, whale watching in Melbourne by Ooh, myself. What? That's amazing. Yeah, it was cool, and I caught it right in time where it was like kind of like the last the last couple pods were really going south towards Antarctica. Oh, cool. So it was very cool to actually see like a mother and a calf kind of up close. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's not often you. I feel like I had the same feeling from that that I had when we had a like a like a truck stop in uh, Utah. I think <laughs> maybe going to Salt Lake, and that was really one of the first times I'd ever seen mountains. Yeah. I mean, I'm in Maryland, but I never have seen like a, a mountain in front of me like that. Right. Those are those are some big ass mountains. Yeah, they're huge, and <laughs> and I and I think. Over time, I've just been really excited about the stuff I can quietly see out of the window. Mm, I'm yeah. definitely a jump seat person. <laughs> oh my! Oh man, me too. Um, and I so so I definitely sat in the jump seat to drive through the like we rode through the Rockies through Canada. Oh, oh God, they're gorgeous. Man. They are gorgeous. I think because nothing's ever because I'm tall, and so for me, it's not like there's a lot of stuff in this world. Like there's tons of things that are bigger than me. I just never get to see them. Yeah. So I'm always in, like intrigued by things that are big. I don't know how to like like big big structures, like big mountains, animals. I'm just like very tickled. Right. Like you're huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something more massive than me is so that's super cool. Yeah, I I remember I remember going to or the, the first time I went to Salt Lake was on tour and I had traveled a little bit as a kid, but I'd never gone West. I, you know, most of the time we had gone to Florida, which I sometimes complain about, but then I'm like, man, I was just fortunate to travel anywhere, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so 
I mean, I remember we were parked at, I think it used to be called the Maverick Center. It might still be, but it was outside of downtown um, in Salt Lake. And I woke up and someone was like, you've never been here, have you? And I was like, no, man, I've never been to Salt Lake. And they just said, I left the curtains down for you. Like, open the curtains and I just want to see your your reaction. And I, I remember opening one side and I was just going, holy shit. And then they go, oh, yeah, go to the other side. And I opened the other side and it was mirror image of these incredibly gorgeous mountains. And I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'll never forget that moment. Cause I'd never seen, I'd never seen anything like that before. Yeah. I, I feel like I had that kind of, yeah, I had that real feeling when I saw mountains and I, I, I don't like cold weather, but I do like mountains. Right. Um, and I feel like I really didn't have that kind of feeling again. And it was kind of all back to back because it was like the the Janet tour. I, when I started the Janet tour, it started in San Francisco and I had never been there all the time. I'd been in LA. I'd never been to San Fran. And it was so unique to me and so brutally scary at the same time. I learned a lot about San Fran, like all, all of its type of people very quickly. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and from it, towards the end of the tour, it's like the, the U.S. weren't ended in Chicago, which is a city I like. Yep. And then we flew to Hawaii, technically, like, had off for a week and a half, and then a week of work, but we're there for two and a half weeks. That's and amazing. then from there, went to Japan. Oof. And then we're in Japan for two and a half weeks, Osaka and Tokyo. So I got to ride a bullet train and see Mount Fuji. Wow, oh, that's amazing. So a bullet train. Um I got to go, you know, to some, like, a really dope roadie bar in Osaka, and, um, you know, like, because they all had been, you know, Janet's camp has just been veterans in this. So of they, course. you know, really took me where to shop and really, you know, showed me where to eat. I thought I was going to eat sushi the entire time. It's my number one favorite food, but that place is nothing but ramen. And so right. I learned a lot, <laughs> you know. Um, and when we got to Osaka, we got there late. I mean, like, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning late. And we had our, our hotel was sick. And I just remember being like i just remember being an adult and being like oh my god a bidet you know like the curtains <laughs> are huge in this room and this bidet is crazy yeah and and if for nothing else more than anything else that morning i got up pretty early and i was like oh man these curtains i didn't realize how big the curtains were and how big the window must be so it's like oh shit let me open it and i pulled them back and it has, I, I mean, I think I cried a little bit because I'd never seen anything like it. Yeah. It was, it was stunning. And it was just like a whole landscape off to a mountain. And it was just t like just these, it looked like a world of Legos of buildings and different right. sizes and colors. And <laughs> I mean, it was, it was very overwhelming. It, and we had off the next day. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just was like, I'm, I'm not going to bug anyone. I'm just going to go outside. Yeah, I'm coming <laughs> you know? for you. It, all it of it. It was great. It was a good time. Oh, man. That is incredible. That's so cool. Um, yeah, goodness, man. I just mi I miss traveling. I mean, we traveled in our van all summer, but, like, just going to those new experiences and seeing big-ass cities and mountains and all this stuff for a first time, it's just, there's how, nothing. How was that? I envy that a bit. I, I, I'm curious. Um, I would highly suggest it, even if you've never thought of it. I always say to people, okay. anybody that asks, I say, even if you've never thought of living in a van for a couple months, just do it. It's, I mean, you've toured, so you would, you would have, you know, like you would, you would get it. It would make sense to you because you're just living out of a vehicle like we do right. while touring. Um, yeah, it was the interesting part was like, pulling into a city and seeing or not a city even just like little towns and seeing trump signs in the yard and being like well we're gonna be looked at like we're assholes because we're gonna wear masks and you know it's like exactly. we just we just you know it was, it was an odd time to travel you know and like we stayed away from people which was nice we would just find like far off the uh, you know off the the road places to park and I mean, it was incredible, you know, it was like a time when we needed to be away from people. So we just stayed away from people. And um, it was a really cool experience. You know, you get you really get to know yourself out there even more so than touring, because it's like, well, what do I want to see? Where do I go today? You know, like as opposed to 
you're on tour and then yeah. you go there and then you have that time and you have that day off. It's like, no, let's stay here for three days. And then you get to stay somewhere for three days instead of like, oh shit, we got to go, you know? Yeah, so it was nice. It was, it. it was a good, like, it was a good learning experience, even on top of having toured and traveled a ton, you know, and weird time and to do it. And it's also based on your own expense and that changes things too. That too. Yeah. <laughs> definitely and you know it just it really showed how polarized this place is you know like i how i think touring has taught me that but i couldn't imagine traveling across this country because it's got to be more evident yeah and, you know it's especially we didn't take we we never got on a big highway like i-95 you know we we did all the small roads the whole time from Nashville all the way to Washington and down through Utah and back across. We didn't take any big roads. We took all the small roads. So we went through the small little places in this country. And I mean, it was, wow. it, it'll yeah, tell just, you a lot just of, glide by them and don't even look out the window, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most people just, yeah, cruise on by. And when you drive through those, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of shocking to see that, you know, that's your own country. And then it, all starts to make sense of you know kind of why we are where we are which is sad I, you know is I, there a smaller city that you recommend now that you've crossed is there a city you'd be like i recommend seeing this oh man i would recommend western montana highly i mean it is just okay. unbelievably beautiful like we went to glacier i mean going to see the national parks was just something i'd always wanted to do but never mm -hmm. had the time to do so national parks were incredible to see um i mean like i can send you photos and i wish i could like visually put them up right now for I you but love like it. Um, i'll send you i'll send you i'll send you new zealand photos <laughs> deal i mean there were photos that we took i mean on the missouri river in like north and south dakota i sent them to a couple people and they were like man it looks like the scottish highlands I know you're not there because wow. we can't go there. You know, we can't right. leave and go to, well, we can get to the UK now, but like they knew we were in the van and they were just like, where the hell are you? And I was like, dude, this is North Dakota, you know? And it's like, yeah. you hear so much about the mighty Mississippi, but you get over to the Missouri, which is West and it is monstrous and it is beautiful, you know? And it's, it's those little realizations that, you know, we just don't get to see when we're traveling all night overnight and we wake up in a new city, you know, like yeah. we found, we found a lake in Wyoming that is in the middle of the state and it's 12 miles off even a small highway. And I mean, we stayed there for three days and we just, it was amazing. You know, it's just like these little gems that weren't even little cities. It was just like these amazing places that weren't by anybody, which is exactly what we needed, you know, <laughs> especially in a yeah. pandemic. That's really rad. I love it. Yeah, I've been, you know, I see when you when you put your dates up and like the cities you're in and the photos and stuff you post. So I'm always interested because I was like, you know, there's not enough. There's not there's not enough friends who travel enough. I feel like I feel like it really is tour friends that travel this way. Right. In comparison to like, if you look at your feed in comparison to maybe like your friends, your childhood friends, in, yeah. in, in the same way. So I notice it like, oh, it really is my tour friends that are up and out. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the thing. It was we were both sitting here going, well. Okay, we know we have no work. Uh, well, we could have gotten work, but we, you know, not work in what we wanted to do. And so we were like, we both had wanted to live in a van, and so it was like, well, we got the time now. Let's do it. So we just did it. Yeah. You know, it was like, why not? Let's go roll around and see some shit. You know, and it it presented its challenges. We had four massive breakdowns, and you know, like. Mm -hmm. We we're on the side of the road in Montana for 20 hours because we had no cell phone oh, service. And yeah, you know, like you live and you grow. And it was it was a beautiful experience, honestly. Like, you know, I, I think most touring people would be definitely OK doing it because we've done it, you know. But like then you get to dictate where you go and what you see and how long you stay there, which was a really freeing aspect to traveling that you don't get very often while touring yeah i can imagine i can so, definitely imagine so yeah it was that's I, awesome i you know i especially tell people that have never thought about it i'm just like just go just do it give yourself a month and figure it out you know there's no yeah. there's no way to plan for it 
it's just you get out there and make it work <laughs> with whatever happens you know we ended up in boise idaho for a month because we our transmission oh, wow. uh went to shit so you know we found some beautiful hikes and we found some amazing vegan places in in boise and you know we made it work you that's know. so rad yeah it's just it. like whatever we got to adapt we put ourselves into this situation for moments like this to learn and you know now we can say we lived in boise you know <laughs> <laughs> right exactly it's yeah, like, i've randomly been to pocatello idaho that's compliments to corn and stone sour right that's uh, yeah. about it yeah i mean it's a beautiful state you know and yeah we just we just figured it out but i, I would... think um i think over the years of touring it's been cool to find out where your tour friends live. Totally. Because some people I've toured with, especially some older people, live in some like places I just wouldn't even think. And I'm like, that's brilliant. Like, this one guy lives in, a, and I always miss a butch the name of it. Uh, what is it, Cote d'Ivoire? Oh, um, in Idaho? Yeah. I think that's right, yeah. yeah. I'd probably and mispronounce just his, it, too. And just, like, his relationship about... How, like he's he's with like a legacy act you know what i mean it's always constant and just like his relationship to being up there because he wants to ski the summers are really great he's yeah. kind of off the grid but he's kind of close to another state line you know like yeah. just that kind of explanation of stuff i'm like that's really really cool i have learned that one of the best things that friends can do for each other sometimes is for people to nestle themselves in other cities so other tour friends have an opportunity to get to see that city yeah you know absolutely. beyond you know how they see it for work yeah. i think yeah, it is it is really cool. And and it just shows like okay, if you are in cities all the time, which we always are on tours, it's like where is the person that sees every city, you know, all over the world? Where do they go to hide? You know, and it's mm. like and I think mm. it's home. Yeah. I know someone that that, that 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 you know has been a vet in the industry and tours plenty and I really think that it's home. Yeah, and if it, if they do vacation, they'll never tell us where they actually vacation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it is it is cool to see where people hide out off a tour. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Or to learn where friends live. <laughs> yeah, 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 and get to then get to go see and explore those places is awesome. Yeah, definitely. All right, I'm gonna go two more questions, and then I'll, I'll okay. let you on your way. But. Um, First one is, what would you want the world to know about you, Ashley? Oh, man. Mm. Wow. I, go, I don't think I've been asked that in a while. And I probably it's very revamped because of the time. Totally, yeah. <laughs> but I think that I would like people to know about me that there's... Uh, hmm. There's a lot of room and capacity to be compassionate and it doesn't fuck with your abundance and stop thinking that it does. Mm, yeah. I also think that, um, getting to know people and not lying to yourself about who they are helps everything. And, uh, I think it gives me a better relationship with people touring wise, personally and whatsoever. Um, because I choose to live with a different sense of understanding yeah. and, and understanding circumstance and circumstantially how people become, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I just really just want to try to project, you know, that you can actually do what you actually want to do with your actual self every actual damn day. Yeah. Actually. Actually. Um, it's not that far off thing. It's not some golden ticket that I've attained. It's not some... I did something with a guy to get it. It's not my aunt pushed me to. It's it's none of that. I mean, you really got to be what you see. And I've had the same kind of vision board since I was really, really young. And I think that we suppress a lot of things the older we get. And, totally. I, and I believe, truly believe that, you know, the only way that you're the, the grandparent with the stories is if you live. Yeah. And... Um, and an emphasis on grandparent because that yes. means that you choose to live on. Yes. And I mean, think of all the, you know, oh, like grandparents and like even just your bus drivers that you sit up front with and just listen to stories, man. How cool. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, that's why I love doing this podcast and like all the stories I've been doing, having people write in about. It's just I love hearing people's stories. Everyone has such a cool, unique and beautiful and powerful story to tell, no matter what you've I done agree. in life. 
I agree. And I do think I, I, I've learned that touring is a gift. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really blessing and a gift. And if you have the luxury of it lasting for decades, it's not that far and few in between, but you're full fortunate if that's what you want to do with your life, you know? Yeah. Learned early from like losing a best friend very early and, and, and coming across to some experiences pretty early that after a while, some shit really just, it just, it just becomes bonus rounds, man. Totally. And for my, for me, my lung surgery was, was just made everybody I met a, a bonus. Absolutely. I can't sit here and think, think touring might last forever. No. I didn't expect it to be taken because that's the word I like to use taken from me exactly in this timeline. Right. Um, but I, but I do know that I'm not bitter. Yeah. I lived in it. I lived in it deeply yeah. in a very, very supportive for the activism of it on top of the work and my own personal joy within it. Um, I think I needed to have, who am I without it? I think that needed to happen. Absolutely. Because I got the, who are you without singing, but I never got the, what happens when there's no touring. I needed it. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I just really just want to like actually live. You can call it happy if you want, but that's relative. So I, I really prefer to fucking live. Yeah, me too. Um, in a very outrageous type of way. And, and in this, I haven't said to you that I worked on some of the Biden campaign stuff production-wise in Delaware through this pandemic. So I've, I've had an opportunity awesome. to see an in, indoor of, you know, production load-in. Yeah, that's And the so protocol cool. be kept with, you know, COVID compliance officers and everything else in between. Oh, I love that. And, uh, you know, so to be fortunate to be able to see something that brings back a little bit of faith about something or just an insight Right. In a world of 12 million people that didn't get, haven't had a chance to see a little bit of this yet, or an opportunity to get a call back with something small, I'm just, I'm just forever, forever grateful. Oh, I, that's I so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Um, all right, last one. If you had the ear of every everyone in the world, what would you say to them? Okay, your your life is a saucer. And what you fill, your life is a cup on a saucer, excuse me. What you fill up in that cup is your abundance. The abundance that you have for yourself, the abundance that you can share with others, the abundance that you have to get up every day. Love yourself, love the next thing, and look forward to tomorrow. The goal in life is to be so overflowing with abundance that it falls off and overflows onto the saucer. Give people the saucer. I love that. I love that so much. Drink water a lot of good water drink good water be honest be honest and be timely in your honesty Mm. i will always say that yeah that's beautiful i love that well (laughs) ashley it's been so fun talking with you i appreciate it (laughs) (laughs) it's so good to talk to you nick thank you i truly appreciate you coming on here and being on with me and talking to me and man it's good to catch up you know? It's so good to catch up with you. I wish nothing but the best for you. And obviously, we're going to come out of this year strong and go on yeah, to the next one. Totally. You know, with a different clarity of ourselves and our reset, you know, for, for each other. But, yeah. you know, I wish you the best. And congrats on the podcast and all that stuff. Once I'm you. done editing and get back on the horse, you got to come on my man. We got to talk. Yeah, okay. let's do it. Anytime. You uh, just let me know. You got it. All right. Thank you again. And I'll talk to you soon. You too. You too. Be safe. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Beautifully Human podcast. To hear more beautiful stories from beautiful humans, follow us on Spotify and rate and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Wanderlust Moon Duo. Peace signs up.